We had a great time with our friends um, with the bolognese uh, pasta dish that I made along with the strawberry crisp and a salad and all that other stuff. But anyway, strawberries are coming in wherever you're at. If you don't have them already in your local farms or farmer's market, they're coming. And so this is what I made is my strawberry rhubarb crisp. There was a recipe out there. It still is, um, but I never did a video on it. So here it is. Strawberry rhubarb crisp. Hey, hi, I'm Amy Roloff and I'm in my little kitchen again, which is of course my most favorite place most of the time. But if it's sunny out, I love to be outside. You know, because the Northwest, even though we didn't get much rain this winter or spring, um, you know, we're indoors kind of a lot because it's a little colder, wet, damp and everything. And so that Michigan vibe still is with me in the sense that, you know, during the winter time, everyone's indoors. Yes, we do our snow activities and everything, but for the most part, you know, we're hanging out indoors. And then in the cold spring or the cold fall, but when the sun comes out, I tell you, I don't like being indoors. I wanna be outside, so that is still within me. Anyway, I'm not sure why I brought that up. So today, we are gonna make a strawberry crisp. Uh, strawberries are coming into season really soon. I love strawberry pie. I love strawberry scones. I love the strawberry shortcake cake that I made. Um, and I think, I think I made a strawberry tart. I would love to make, um, like little mini, uh, lemon curd strawberry tart. Uh, so anyway, but we're going to make a, a strawberry crisp, a strawberry rhubarb crisp today. I mean, what an awesome combination. And how I usually start this out is I don't pre-cook the rhubarb and the strawberries. I think there's some other recipes that do that, which is fine. I, I have just found that I don't, I, I, I like some bite to my strawberries or rhubarb. I don't like them all mushy and like we're having jam or something. So anyway, let's get going. Strawberry crisp, crisp, strawberry crisp, strawberry rhubarb crisp. Chris and I are having some friends over, so I thought this would make a really nice dessert. Okay. I'm back, Amy Roloff in Amy Roloff Little Kitchen because summer is just right around the corner. Farmers markets are happening and hopefully some of you guys will be going to your local farmers picking blueberries, picking strawberries, picking raspberries, or picking peaches, or picking apple. I don't know what, but anyway, please visit your farmers market, your local farmers market. There's a lot of small farms farmers nearby that are working really, really hard to, um, um, you know, grow some really great vegetables and fruits and herbs and all sorts of things to help us keep gathering around the table. So anyway, so I've got local rhubarb, local strawberries, and we're making strawberry rhubarb crisps. So in an order to prep some of this, I got a leaf here. What in the world? Yep. So in order to get this stuff going, I have a cup of sugar. I'm gonna add the cornstarch in there. I'm switching it up here because my previous, um, my previous recipe, I used flour, but I'm gonna switch it up and see what the cornstarch does. But in order to make sure that it gets all incorporated easily, evenly, I'm just going to mix in the cornstarch with the sugar a little bit here. Because the rhubarb can be tart, it can be tough, and the sugar will help sweeten that up a little bit. And plus, sweeten the whole dish up. Now, if you want to back off on the sugar, back off at least a quarter of a cup. That's that's. You know, that's perfectly fine as well. Okay, I think I got that going. 
So I'm just gonna sprinkle that. Then I'm gonna stir that all around. Let me move some of this stuff here. Then I'm going to zest about a half of a lemon. Oops, a seed popped out. And I tell you, lemon to fruit does something wonderful. It just kind of gives it a little bit of sunshine. That's what I think of lemons. Give it a little bit of sunshine. Okay. Okay, there we go. And about a juice. I don't know, a tablespoon or two. This juice, this lemon had a lot of juice in it but it'll be good. Yeah, about a tablespoon or two. Just gonna make sure I combine this. Oh, this freshness of the strawberry, if you could just smell them. I'll tell you, there's nothing like farmer's market. And the one thing I like about a farmer's market is because it's coming, it, all, all this stuff that you're getting and going to and purchasing is all local or at least within their area or region. And they're definitely not picking it green. Obviously they're not picking it ripe because give it a chance a day or two. But I tell you, it's a lot more flavor than what you make it in the grocery store. But that's why we appreciate our grocery stores in the winter time. And believe me, like a hardware store or, or you know lumber store or whatever it is, garden store, sometimes is to a guy. Well, the grocery store is my place. Truth, I'm not really sure if Chris likes going to a grocery store. Okay, we're gonna pour all of this into this dish. I, I don't really think I need to bubble it or uh, butter it. Boy, is it all gonna fit. I'm gonna use a spoon because why? You know me. There's a lot of stuff that can be left behind that should be going into what you're preparing. There we go. Well, I should probably got a bigger dish. But you know the thing is, this is all gonna cook down. Okay, you know what guys? I hmm. know, oh, I think this dish is okay. Make sure you get a big enough dish. Okay. Okay, let's get going on the crumble. Okay, so. I did go ahead and put the strawberry rhubarb sugar mixture in a different a dish. I think my oval one, I didn't think was quite deep enough. And by time you get the crumble on and it starts bubbling. So I did go ahead and put it in a nine by 13 baking dish. So let's get going on the crumble because this will probably take about 45 minutes to an hour to cook. So I've got one cup of flour. And what I have here, I am using one cup of flour as well, but it's, it's, it's been processed differently. It's done locally here. Um, I talked to this woman and it's, it's called, hang on for a sec. It's 
called Tualatin Plains Great Grain. This is red fife wheat flour. But I think what it has is a little more uh, protein or gluten or something like that, but it hasn't been highly processed like we get with our all-purpose flour. So I'm gonna give it a try. So it's two cups of flour, or I use one cup of all-purpose flour and one cup of this whole grain wheat flour, rye flour. Got a fork here, I'm gonna stir that up a little bit. I'm gonna add a dash of salt. I'm gonna add a cup of brown sugar. I'm gonna mix that in here. Sometimes I like to add the brown sugar in before I add in the quick oats. You can use whole oats, but I'm using quick oats here. Um, because you can see if, you, if the lumps of the brown sugar have been kind of crushed and aren't lingering. Okay, I think that's good. Got a couple more here. Okay, then we're gonna add in one cup of quick oats. Whole oats is just as fine too. Okay, what else do I got here? Okay, I'm gonna add in a little bit of cinnamon. I don't know, maybe half a tea, no, I would say a teaspoon. Yeah, I would definitely say a teaspoon. And I'm gonna add in some, at least a teaspoon. I'm gonna grate up, where did my grater go? Oh dear. I lost my grater. Here it is. I just put it over there on the other counter. I don't know, I'm just gonna try and grate like maybe a quarter teaspoon. Just enough to give it some flavor, but not to be overpowering. And then I think it's about it for this. I think it's about it for that nut. That nutmeg. Okay, what else? Oh yeah, I'm gonna add in a little bit of vanilla. Okay, I've got about a cup of butter. You want it kind of soft, but not too hard, so you can definitely mesh it in there. I'm just gonna go in like five seconds more. There we go. I might be getting a new microwave and this whole thing up here is going to be no more. I want a different fan. I'm hoping to open that area up just a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of slice this a little bit so it's just not one big chunk. A pastry cutter is very helpful here unless you wanna do this all in the food processor. And that's perfectly fine as well. Okay, we're gonna do a cup at a time. I'm just gonna mash it in there. So I'm gonna keep on doing this until the butter is fully incorporated. And I'll be back. So I'm gonna finish up the strawberry crisp. Our friends are here. And so I chopped up, I'm gonna say maybe about a quarter cup, third cup of pecans, just because I like the crunch when it comes to a crisp. But you don't have to add any nuts if you don't want. I got a couple of big things. 
Okay, so I'm gonna stir this in here. I think I forgot to add the vanilla to the strawberry and rhubarb, so I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit in here and kind of mix it in since I've got butter. So normally I would have added vanilla with the strawberries and stuff. I probably have a lot more stuff for the crisp here than I need, but we'll see. Okay. Let me see, I'm gonna get a spoon. It's a gorgeous day outside, so Chris is showing them our pond and our fish in our pond while I finish up the video. So, we're just gonna sprinkle it all around. I wanna make sure I cover it all, but I also wanna make sure the crisp doesn't get lost, but it also doesn't drown out the strawberries and the rhubarb. But I don't think it will. And after you bake this, if you don't think your top is crispy enough, just put it under the broiler for about a minute. Okay, I think I do have enough crisp. Okay, I should have taken a picture of just the strawberries and rhubarb. Oh, I tell you when it's a one woman show, I forget some of the details. So strawberry rhubarb crisp going into the oven, 375 degrees. I wanna give you the exact amount of time. So we are going to put it in there for about 45 minutes. Check on it about, you know, I don't know, 40. It could go longer, 50, 55, but just as long as it starts to bubble and the topping has kind of browned a little bit or crisped up. So anyway, make sure I got all that. Here we go. Oh, I better open up the oven door first because I'm holding it like this. It's like, who's gonna open up the oven door? And who's gonna lower my oven rack? Oh dear. My oven rack was up too high, so you just want it in the middle of the rack. There we go. Okay, I am back. And the reason I am back in my little kitchen because I forgot that I did not kind of put a button on my strawberry rhubarb crisp on a video. So I am back. And look at, we only have a little bit left. So I thought I better hurry up and do this. We had a great time with our friends um, with the bolognese, uh, pasta dish that I made along with the strawberry crisp and a salad and all that other stuff. But anyway, strawberries are coming in wherever you're at. If you don't have them already in your local farms or farmer's market, they're coming. And so this is what I made is my strawberry rhubarb crisp. There was a recipe out there. It still is, um, but I never did a video on it. So here it is, strawberry rhubarb crisp go over to my YouTube channel, Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen, and you'll find this recipe, the videos, and all of the other um, videos out there. So I'm going to take a bite because this is kind of my breakfast at the moment. And I think this goes great with like whipped cream or ice cream or anything else you may want. Mm.
the crisp is still crisp. And the one reason that I love this cobbler is that the rhubarb gives a little bit of tartness to it. I don't like anything overly sweet. So adjust the sugar amount or whatever you may want to do. But this is so good. You guys got to give it a try. Okay, from my little kitchen to yours. Keep enjoying gathering around the table with family and friends. Give this recipe a try on my YouTube. It, the video is over at my YouTube channel, Amy Roloff's Little Kitchen. Till next time.